There's arguably no greater force of nature than an EF5 tornado. It's a marvel that Mother Nature spawns, but it's violent, and it can decimate communities in just mere seconds. Until yesterday, May 20th, 2013, was the last time an EF5 scarred American soil. This is video of that aftermath from that EF5 in Moore, Oklahoma. Winds topped 200 miles an hour, 24 people died, more than 200 others were injured. And more than 12 years later, there's a new tornado among the EF5 ranks. The National Weather Service out of Grand Forks, North Dakota, on Monday, upgraded the Enderlin tornado from June of this year. Along with the upgraded rating, the office released a detailed forensic analysis of the surveyed wind damage. Melinda Behrens joins us this morning. Melinda is the meteorologist in charge, the National Weather Service in Grand Forks. Uh, Melinda, thanks for joining us. Uh, at first, this tornado was rated at least an EF3. I'm curious, those damage indicators that led to the EF5 upgrade. Yeah, so the main portion was um, looking at the site of the train derailment. So with the, the fully loaded uh, grain cars that were tipped over and then the lofting of the empty tanker cars um, of over 475 feet, those were the main um, damage indicators and, and not the typical damage indicators that we have on our uh, EF scale that we use um, that we looked at and used that forensic analysis to upgrade this tornado to EF5 intensity with winds of greater than 210 miles an hour. The EF5 tornado was part of a deadly derecho. It, it tore through, as you know, North Dakota and, and Minnesota. It was between June 20th and the 21st uh, of this year. Three people in Enderlin died. Uh, the report, one thing that stood out to me was the tree damage. Uh, the trees can tell us a lot when you look at damage. And, and there was one line that stood out to me. Uh, it said trees were debarked with a, quote, sand papering effect prevalent on those trees. Can you describe that for us? Yeah, so when the uh, strong winds inside a tornado uh, picked up and loft the debris, um, so different things like dirt and um, the housing material or leaves and branches, uh, it creates and granulates that material into like an abrasive material against other parts of vegetation like these trees. So when it can debark the trees and it takes the bark off, but then it also rubs this abrasive material um, with those high speed winds against the trees, it creates that uh, sandpapering effect or like it's making that material into a sandpaper against the side of those trees and smooths off those sides. So when you see something like that um, being done to the vegetation, it is an indication again of a very violent tornado and those high wind speeds um, happening within that tornado. Not something that you see with uh, with every tornado, just, just on the higher end. I know that also with some of these trees which were found, they were ripped up from the ground with their root ball. It wasn't as if these trunks were just snapped, which is powerful enough, but clear up from the ground, you have these trees which were found that some you didn't even know where they came from, but, but uprooted, um, incredible. There's a lot of chatter in the weather world, I'm sure you're aware, um, about this rating that was done by your office. And the chatter, it does surround that bigger topic of, of tornadoes being rated EF5. Some have said it's tougher these days to get that rating. You had even mentioned how looking at a train derailment isn't something that really is by the books, right? But when you're dealing with a, what is it, about a 22-ton tanker that's empty, I, I mean, it's something to highlight. And the report even said that winds were at least 210 miles an hour. I mean, would you say that it was clear to you that this damage was EF5 in Enderlin? Yeah, correct. So when we worked with our um, the Northern Tornadoes Project out of Canada, who uh, ran the forensic analysis on that, it it did come with a minimum uh, wind speed of right around 266 miles an hour to loft that tanker. Mm. So we went with the confidence factor of that greater than 210 miles an hour of of where we felt uh, was a. a, a the best place to kind of rate that at this speed um, with that factor that, you know, it could have been higher based on these forensic analysis um, estimates. So so it definitely, uh, you know, takes quite a bit of force to loft those tankers and, and tip those fully loaded grain cars. And, and we know the, uh, I mean, the loss of life um, in, in Inderland specifically and just the power that these storms had on that night of June 20th, not going to be a memory that, that people forget. I guess when we, before we wrap it up, 
This EF-5 is now the, the farthest north EF-5 on record, and it was also one of the shortest duration EF-5s, about 12 miles. Does that speak at all to severe weather season in North Dakota? What's something that maybe a lot of folks don't know about severe weather season in North Dakota? Yeah, so this actually hit at one of our, uh, you know, typical peak times as we, we hit severe season in North Dakota. So late June into July is our peak time as, a, as, as the, the severe we severe weather season kind of shifts north up into the northern portion of the United States. In fact, June 20th of 1957 was when uh, the last F5 tornado in uh, North Dakota hit uh, Fargo, North Dakota. Um, and we've had two F5s before that one and then one in Fort Rice. So it's not unheard of to get those strong tornadoes this far north. This was just the first time uh, since we've transitioned to the EF scale. But, you know, they certainly aren't common. And um, we have, you know, the majority of our tornadoes occurring in June, um, late May to, to June. So this is our typical time if we are going to see a tornado of that strength that it would occur. But we are seeing kind of the, the season expand. We did mm -hmm. just have a very large tornado outbreak into September uh, in the Bismarck area where they had over 20 tornadoes occur. And usually we only see about 2% of our tornadoes in September. So uh, we are seeing some changes uh, in our severe weather patterns here in the state. Well, we always uh, keep a watchful eye here at Fox Weather. We really appreciate you joining us this morning. Insightful Melinda Behrens, meteorologist in charge at the National Weather Service in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Thanks for joining us this morning. Thank you.